You can get some pretty amazing results by rendering with cycles in Blender. But one issue that you have to deal with is noise. Fortunately, there's a new feature scheduled to be released with Blender version 2.79 that can help. It's called Denoising. You can find it by clicking the Render Layers button. To enable it, just add a check mark next to Denoising. Then when you render an image, Denoising will be applied. If you're watching this video before Blender version 2.79 has been released, then you can download an experimental version from Blender.org. I've done some experimentation with this new feature, and in this video I'll show you what I found. With some scenes, you can just enable denoising and it works really well. With other scenes, you need to be more careful how it's used. Let's start by looking at a scene where it's very easy to use denoising while achieving great results. For this scene, I've set the number of render samples to 50. Sometimes you can get bright speckles in your rendered image that are commonly called fireflies. So I've set the clamp indirect value to 1 to help prevent this. Denoising is disabled. Now I'll render it. This is the rendered image. You'll notice that there's a lot of noise in this dark area. So let's render it again with denoising enabled. This time the noise is gone. The denoising feature worked great, but it did take a little longer to render. Without denoising, the render time was 59 seconds. With denoising, the render time was 1 minute and 42 seconds. So let's render it again with fewer render samples to speed it up. So I'll set the number of render samples to 25 and render it again. This time it rendered in 1 minute and 11 seconds, and the image still looks very good. Next, let's look at a scene where denoising causes some distortions when not enough render samples are used. I'll start by rendering it with 25 samples. I also have the clamp indirect value set to 1 to help prevent fireflies. Denoising is turned off. The areas where the noise is the most noticeable is at the light reflections, the shadows, and the dark side of the green sphere. So let's turn on denoising and render it again. You'll notice that the light reflections look blotchy instead of smooth. The same thing is true of the shadows, especially around the outside edges. If you open up the denoising section, you'll find some settings that you can change. If you increase the radius, feature strength, or strength settings, it can help to smooth things out, but it may also result in a loss of detail. So to fix the blotchy areas without losing too much detail, you can just increase the number of render samples and keep the default denoising settings. So I'll increase the number of render samples to 150 and render it again with the default denoising settings. This produced good results. For comparison, I'll render it again still with 150 samples, but this time I'll disable denoising. You can see that with denoising disabled, there is still quite a bit of noise in the shadows. Here's a comparison of denoising disabled and enabled. So denoising this image definitely improved it. Next, let's look at a scene where denoising caused a loss of detail. I'll start by rendering it with 25 samples. I also have the clamp indirect value set to 1 to help prevent fireflies. Denoising is turned off. The areas where the noise is the most noticeable is on the glass. So let's turn on denoising and render it again. Denoising removed a lot of the noise, but we also lost a lot of the detail. The edges of the reflections are no longer sharp, and a lot of the detail in this area was lost. 
So I'll increase the number of render samples to 250 and render it again with denoising still enabled. This produced better results, but I would like the edges around the light reflections to be a little sharper. So with scenes where image detail is important, I found that in addition to increasing the number of render samples, it also helps to decrease the strength value. There is a balance between smoothing out the noise and preserving detail. Reducing the strength value will result in less noise smoothing, but it will preserve more detail. So I'm going to set the strength value to 0.25 and render it again. This time the detail looks good and there was still enough noise reduction to produce a nice result. For comparison, I'll render it again still with 250 samples, but this time I'll disable denoising. You can see that with denoising disabled, there is still quite a bit of noise. Here's the image again with denoising enabled. So even when using a reduced strength value, denoising still improved the image. If you try out the new denoising feature and discover any tricks or techniques for using it, please share it in the comments. And if you found this video useful, then please subscribe. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.